My name's Charles Taz. I'm the curator of Clarington Museums. And we're at one of our three sites, the Bowmanville Museum, which has uh, been a museum since 1961. But the building it's in goes back to 1847 and was uh, donated to the town of Bowmanville as a museum uh, through the generosity of a lady named Sarah Jane Williams. Tonight Proof is at the Bowmanville Museum. The museum is made up of a couple of buildings and tonight we're focusing particularly on this house. We've had people uh, come to the museum over the years and have felt a uh, presence of ghosts uh, and things like that. Uh, I have witnessed people uh, you know, feeling these things and um, we thought it would be a good idea to have proof here to maybe try to explain it or even tell us you know, maybe who they are a little more definitely. This house is haunted by at least five ghosts according to various psychics and mediums that have been through the place. The one ghost that's down here is a little boy and he's playing hide and seek and he's in the cupboard behind the stairs here. So this was the original staircase to the basement but over the years was converted, converted to a cupboard and apparently he's in here playing hide and seek. Um, a couple of things associated with this ghost is that uh, one time we had two, uh, one summer we had two summer students that had to get in here and they could not for the life of them open this door and you've seen how easily I can open it. Um, when, I, when they came over to get me and I came over and I just opened it no problem, the look of astonishment on their faces kind of told me that they were telling the truth, that they really couldn't get this door open and for whatever reason, so there's that. The other thing is, um, we had a gentleman working here out in the yard, and when the secretary arrived around one o'clock in the afternoon, the gentleman was raking in the yard, and he said to the secretary, oh, uh, are you here to see the little boy? And she said, what are you talking about? There's nobody here. And he said, well, I saw a little boy in the attic window upstairs, the Belvedere, we call it. And she said, well, that can't be true. But the, he came in with her and went up and checked, and there was nobody there. But as he was looking around, he came to this picture here, and he said that this was the little boy. This little boy here. Um, this painting, this picture is a nice picture of a little boy in his Sunday vest. I believe it's a David Thompson from Newtonville, so not really anything to do with the house. So why it would be, but you know, perhaps it could be mistaken. I believe, if I recollect correctly, that's the only, uh, uh, that, that's the only ghost on this floor, the rest are upstairs. <laughs> so this is called the boys' room. This is Gordon Jury's room. This is their son's room. But apparently the ghost in here is on the bed and it's a little girl and she's pouting. So when somebody walks in the room, she actually flips over and faces the wall because she's really not interested in talking to anybody. This is the hot spot of the house. I've seen more people react to this room mm. than anything else. Uh, this is what we call the girls' room. And uh, there's a girl in here and she's crying. She's upset. She's on the bed as well. And the psychic felt that what had happened to her was beyond the house, like it was something outside. And she mentioned the stock market crash of 1929. Now why a little girl would be complaining about that, I don't know. We're surmising perhaps they couldn't go on a trip or something because they didn't have the money. So that's, that's the other ghost. This old desk here in the library was made here in Bowmanville. It actually came out of the fire department here. And apparently there's an, an uh, older lady who's quite short that hangs around the desk. And I think the thought was that she came with the desk. And then the final ghost is in the master bedroom. That, that's the one that was identified by the psychics. So the master bedroom furniture here is uh, built, we think, about 1879. It may have been built in Bowmanville. It actually came out of the Waddell House, which is the public library in Orono now. And the Waddells were the leading citizens of uh, Orono. So there's a gentleman in the bed here. He's quite stout. He's got a beard. And he gets up and he groans in pain because his legs hurt him so much. And he walks over to the window, looks out, and then he goes back into the bed. So, so far we've had a tour of the house. Uh, it's a pretty cool house. It's got a lot of artifacts, a lot of history, a lot of gathered history, a lot of gathered uh, antiques. Feeling of the house so far, very welcoming. It's very warm, it's nice. So far tonight we've gone in and identified the hot spots of the house. So we have uh, set up uh, cameras 
in the bedrooms upstairs and in the kitchen downstairs. Uh, all in all, there's been about five different ghosts reported or supposed ghosts reported in this location. So we're going to those areas where people have claimed to see things or hear things, uh, feel things, and uh, set up our equipment there. Okay. At the Golden Girl Museum, doing the usual walkthrough, just at the front door, doing our police lines. Took me like three or four tries to get it open. I'm gonna try it again. Did you turn it all the way? I, I did. I went this way and pushed. I went this way and pushed. I, mean, I don't know. Okay, it's fully. I don't know. I it, I struggled. I was like, seriously, probably did it three times before I finally went. What did it say? It said follow. It's right outside. Tink, tink. I don't even hear it. It's going now. It's there. Oh yeah. your name? Did you want us to come in here so you made the noise? I don't hear the noise anymore. Can you make another noise? Pink, pink. I thought I heard as you guys came in here. I thought I heard it sound like a almost like a cat crying. Oh yeah. What was that? That was the noise here. It sounds like if you took something and you hit glass, like it's going pink, pink.
I think it might have been this creaked as you walked in. It was the end right there. Mm, yeah. I think I heard that because it was a second before you had stepped into the frame when I heard that noise. So. Yeah, that could be, I could hear it. See so yeah, that would sound like it. Yeah. And could it be anything outside? I know I'm hearing from uh, near the DVR system at the window. It sounds like, every now and then it almost sounds like music chimes, like if there's wind chimes out there. Hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Is that window open or no? No, it's closed. Yeah, it doesn't feel, I agree with you. I don't think it just feels spooky or anything, but it's usually, if there's something here, you, they usually, well, I don't know about here, but usually you know something's around. This doesn't feel like there's anything here at the moment. You know, I mean, the stories here are, are it's almost like legend, like, you know, when they've come up with these five ghosts, they just kind of keep repeating. Mm -hmm. And whether that's fact or not, it's, it's really all based off of the psychics expression of the impression of the place and they make them really well known in the story so there are people just kind of you know mm. i don't know it's a cool spot it's just well it's early i mean and again that i mean i can't say that i haven't felt anything because that that room does freak me out First of all, for anyone who's here, who's with us, thank you for letting us come in. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm Paul, this is Brad, this is Ben. So if there's anyone here who wants to come forward, feel free to come in and join us. Like let us know you're here. You can make a noise, but please make it a distinct noise that we're not going to question. If you want to come in and touch one of us, you're more than welcome. You're not allowed to hurt us in any way. A moment ago, on the back of my arm, I felt you know. I think it's one of those spontaneous little pains you every now and then get. But anyway, I just happened to feel something on the back of my arm, but I believe it was a spontaneous twitch, twitch or pain or something. If you just touched Ben, can you make it more obvious? Can you just poke him? Can 
Can you touch his neck or his hair? Or push him? The fleer just to see if there's anything going on. forward, speak with us, make your presence known. I mean, you know harm at all, we're just here to learn about you. We want you to talk to us or make communication with us. It's definitely heavy in this room. I feel it on my chest. I almost want to sit down. Yeah. Like I feel drawn to sit at the table, but... To like it leads me to feel like it leads me to feel like it's female because it's like really only reason because I, I feel like I should be like I'm being asked to sit down to be served. I just felt really uncomfortable in that dining room. Like I just don't want to be in there. Paul was saying that his heart was racing. My heart was racing, but I just don't like. I, I actually can feel like I can smell something in there. Like to me, it smells like something old, and and it just feels very uncomfortable in that room. How about in here? I'm I'm sitting down, so I I, I don't know. I just feel a little more relaxed, but I still can't. I keep looking over to that room. I just, it's like I'm in a relaxing environment, but I just can't relax. I just look, keep looking over there. Yeah, I feel like somebody's got bad news in that room. <laughs> like somebody told somebody something that, you know, was really life changing. And it wasn't good. I don't know why I'm feeling that. I don't get feelings. Now it's, to me, I'm getting headachey and I'm getting heavy feelings. Like it's, the whole room just did a... Again, nothing scary, nothing, nothing negative. It's just, it's a, uh, it just feels different all of a sudden. Okay, so I'm upstairs in what they call the Belvedere. I thought I heard whispering up here earlier. So I thought I'd come up and do a quick session up here. There has been a story of a little boy looking out that window over there, which would be fairly impossible because it's over six feet off the ground. <laughs> that was you, can you make that noise again? Make it again. That was you. Can you make that noise again? Can you make it again? Are you trying to get my attention? Because you've got it. I personally didn't feel anything. Uh, it's not a scary location, so you weren't even creeped out. That was an interesting night. I mean, there were certainly some feelings of uh, not being alone, but there was really little activity. I mean, when we play back our audio and video, maybe we'll find something, but uh, there wasn't a lot of really standout moments of the night, unfortunately, but, you know, that's par for the course, right? It's a really cool backdrop, I'll say that. It's a great place to be. Not much really happened. We got some emotional vibes off of different places in different rooms. Um, in one room I got some definite knocks, whether 
it's paranormal or not, we can't say. It was very coincidental if it wasn't. But other than that, not really a lot happened.